Good morning, I'm Tamara Shoemaker. There was, or there is, a wise woman that I know, um, quite a prayer warrior among my acquaintances, and she taught me a valuable lesson about maybe a year or two ago. I remember her telling me this. She told me, praise instead of please breaks the enemy's chains. Please are petitions or requests. So praise instead of please breaks the enemy's chains. See, when we think of war, we think of weapons, offensive and defensive strategies, right? Generally, we think of um, high adrenaline and, and danger. And when we consider spiritual warfare, we consider intense prayer, angelic and demonic forces warring it out in heavenly realms. And we think of fervent prayer warriors asking for intervention and taking authority in the name of Jesus. We rarely, if ever, think of the power of joy and praise and celebration. And I love how the book of Esther begins with feasting and celebration and ends with feasting and celebration, but a much different type of feasting and celebration. Um, the first feasting um, is described in Esther chapter one, which is the end of a queen, right? Her reign. And the second is in Esther's chapter, uh, Esther chapter nine and 10, the salvation of the Jews. So there's celebration of two very different things here. Um, so at the beginning of Esther chapter nine, D-Day has arrived. It says on the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar, the edict commanded by the king was to be carried out. On this day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, but now the tables were turned and the Jews got the upper hand over those who hated them. The Jews assembled in their cities and all the provinces of King Xerxes to attack those seeking their destruction. No one could stand against them because the people of all the other nationalities were afraid of them. And all the nobles of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and the king's administration helped the Jews because fear of Mordecai had seized them. Mordecai was prominent in the palace. His reputation spread throughout the provinces and he became more and more powerful. Esther chapter 9 verses 1 to 4. So the enemies of the Jews, they had hoped to rout them thoroughly this day on the 13th day. But somebody flipped the script. Somebody turned the tables. Um, instead of the Jews being routed, they did it really right. And the king's satraps, governors, and administrators helped them because of the position that Mordecai the Jew now held. He was now second in command of the entire Persian empire. That's from Esther chapter 10, verse 3. And so on that day, the, th the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar, there was warfare, right? There was fighting, there was death, there was destruction. In the city of Susa alone, 500 men were killed, including all 10 sons of Haman, which significantly um, was the final nail in the proverbial coffin, right, of Haman's original success. If you want to look at my uh, post, Whose Water Course Is This Anyway? Um, it's his third power grab, and you can it's linked in the blog. So, because, and because Queen Esther requested it, the king's edict continued on into the 14th day of the month of Adar, and 300 more men were killed the next day in Susa. Across the entire empire itself, the Jews killed 75,000 of their enemies. And it's ugly, you guys. It's horrible that this happened. And yet when you consider the blanket decimation and annihilation that would have completely wiped out an entire people group without the Jews doing this, you see the painful necessity, but the necessity itself was brought about by the pride of Haman's heart. Because Mordecai would not bow down to him, this mass slaughter became a reality on that day. So how carefully we must weigh our motivations, right? Let pride be far, far from us. Proverbs 6, 16 says, there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. And then heading the list at the very, very top of that is haughty eyes, Proverbs 6, 17. Other items on that list are present in Haman's story as well, but prominently pride caused this painful day in the Esther story. My mom always used to quote um, this pithy little piece of wisdom from Proverbs any time that I was in danger <laughs> of sounding too arrogant about anything at all. She would say, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall, Proverbs uh, 16, 18 is where that's from. And then she'd usually follow it up with one of my favorite pieces of scripture um, from Philippians chapter two, which says, your attitude should be the same as that is of Christ Jesus who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. 
and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, since Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the most humiliating and painful spectacle, which was death by capital punishment, death on a cross, God exalted Jesus to the highest place. And it goes on, that's Philippians 2, 5 to 9. But how much damage is done every day in the name of pride, right? How much damage has the church done in the name of pride? How much damage can we do to the enemy when we use as one of our primary weapons the very same weapon that the enemy himself has just placed in our hands, pride? We render ourselves completely ineffectual against the enemy when we stand on pride. No, in repentance and rest is your salvation and quietness and trust is your strength. Isaiah 30, 15. Repentance, lest we forget, involves humility, right? Humbling ourselves before the Lord, getting on our knees, you know, whether physically, if we have the knees that can do it, or spiritually, we can all do that to beg for his intervention. That's where our strength is. And also in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, Nehemiah says, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. In this, in this war, spiritual warfare, the war between angels and demons, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Or in the words of my friend, praise instead of please breaks the enemy's chains. So look what happens in Esther chapter 9 and 10. We're going to finish up Esther today. Um, celebration happens. Mordecai recorded these events, it says, and he sent letters to all the Jews through the provinces of King Xerxes near and far to have them celebrate annually the 14th and the 15th days of the month of Adar as the time when the Jews got relief from their enemies and as the month when their sorrow was turned into joy and their mourning into a day of celebration. He wrote to them to observe the days as days of feasting and joy and giving presents of food to one another and gifts to the poor. That's Esther chapter 9, verses 20 to 22. Psalm 30, 11 says, You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. So we go from Esther chapter 4, verse 1, where Mordecai learned of all that had been done and he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes. And from there, from that pit of despair, from that place, we go all the way over to Esther chapter 10, verse 3, where it says, Mordecai the Jew was second in rank to King Xerxes, preeminent among, among the Jews and held in high esteem by his many fellow Jews because he worked for the good of his people and spoke up for the welfare of all the Jews. From the pit of despair to the peak of the Persian Empire, the joy of the Lord was Mordecai and Esther's strength and pride was Haman's downfall. So how are we fighting our battles? In the joy of the Lord or through the efforts brought about because of pride? Because I guarantee you the outcome of your war will be decided by the, the artillery that you decide to use. So I've enjoyed Esther. I love going through books. I am so excited to start another one. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to start um, tomorrow, but we will see how it goes and I will let you know I'll be here and <laughs> We'll see what um, I end up doing. All right. I've enjoyed this journey with you. I will see you tomorrow.